Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this image. The ability to manipulate highlights and shadows is a powerful technique, especially with shiny or reflective subjects. This image was produced with just one light, although it has the look of a multiple light setup. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. OK, let's have a look at what we've got set up so far. So on this table here, I have a piece of mount board. Uh, this comes in a variety of different colours uh, and is very useful for this sort of thing as a base. Uh, it gives a very nice flat uh, and matte surface with a consistent colour. And on here I've got the subject, which is this plate of beans. Uh, now I've picked this on purpose because the plate is very shiny uh, and the beans are actually quite reflective. Uh, you get lots of highlights uh, because of the, the source which is covering them. OK, enough about the subject. Uh, coming for, forward a little bit, I have my tripod. Uh, and on that, I'm going to place uh, the camera. Now I'm using this full-frame digital SLR with a 24 to 70 zoom lens on the front of it and a flash sync trigger on the top. Now, the camera is tethered into Capture One software, so it's easy to see the results as we go along. OK, so I'll just pop this on this tripod, like that, and we'll have a go at lining up the shot. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is just wind this up a little, just to get a, a better angle, something like that. And now I'll zoom that in. Just a bit. About there should do it. There we go. I think that's in focus. We can always check it a little later. OK, so with all that done, what I'll do now is just turn the camera on. And the software here has recognised the camera. And you can see that these are the settings that we have on the camera at the moment. So it's in full manual mode. Uh, 1 250th of a second is the shutter speed, 100 ISO, and I've picked an aperture of f11. I've done that on purpose because that's going to give me quite a large depth of field, and it's also going to be useful for cutting out quite a lot of the house lighting. OK, so if we just take a test exposure with no flash, there we go, we should get virtually no image. That means that any light that we add with flash will be the only light which will affect the subject. Right, so with that done, the next thing to do would be to set up a light. So I'm going to use uh, a Profoto B1X, just with a small reflector on the front of it. We're just going to light this from behind here somewhere initially. I'll just pop this up in the air a bit, something like that. We'll turn that on. So just with an arbitrary uh, energy level set, what I'll do is grab an image uh, and we'll see where we are in terms of exposure. So this is um, pretty horrible lighting. You can see you've got um, an image here of the light itself reflected in the plate, uh, and overall I think the whole thing is um, a little underexposed. So I'll add uh, maybe one stop of energy uh, to that light. So I just select the light on there here, and I'll just add one stop. We'll grab that again. OK, so the exposure is coming along, but the quality of the light here is not really what I want. I want to have it uh, a lot softer, but be able to control just how soft it is. Now, I could use a softbox um, on this light, uh, which would be one way to do it, but it doesn't actually give you a great deal of control. Uh, you just end up with a homogeneous light across the whole of the subject. Now, that's not going to be able to uh, pick out uh, any of the detail that we've got in this subject. 
So what I'm going to do is use a sheet of diffusion material just about here somewhere and by doing that I can then manipulate the light behind that diffusion material in order to create the type and depth of shadow that I want. Okay, so to set all this up I'll just use this C stand like so, just with an arm on it and this is a roll of 216 uh, diffusion material. So we'll just pop this on here. I'll just pull that down. I'm going to need to put this up in the air a little. So I'm just putting it at the back of the uh, table here. Probably needs to go up a bit more than that. There we go. Something like that. Okay, so with that in place, and not doing anything else with the light, uh, I'll just grab another image, and we'll see what we get. Okay, now this is instantly very different. We just go back to the original image. You can see you've got highlights here, you've got a very hard shadow underneath the plate, and then on this one, we have a very diffuse highlight along the edge of the plate and the shadow is considerably softer. But I still don't think that light is in quite the right place just yet. So the easiest way to actually get it into the right place would be to use the modelling function. So if I just turn on the modelling light, like so, uh, this will give me a constant light so I'll be able to see what is going on. And in order to help me do that, I'm just going to use Live View on here, like so. So I've got a live image from the camera. The other thing is um, I'll need to just turn out the house lights uh, whilst this process goes on. There we go. So with the house lights out, what I can do is move the light around at the back here and as I do that, you can see the difference it makes to the image. So if I just move it round to round this corner somewhere like that, and just twist that back onto the subject, there we go. That's much more like the sort of thing that I want. So now having done that, what I can do is turn the house lights back on and we'll take another image. There we are. This is starting to come along. It's possibly a little dark. I think we've probably taken some energy out of the system uh, by moving the light and uh, also putting the diffusion material in. Uh, so what I'll do is just add another stop to that. Like so, and while I'm here, I'll turn the modeling light off as we don't need it for the time being. There, that's starting to get there. So, this is what we had before, and this is what we've got now with the extra stop. Uh, so, the next thing that I want to do is just control this uh, background here, and also add some contrast into the, uh, into the beans themselves. So, the way I'm going to do that is by using a couple of flags at the back here, um, just with a bit of um, so-called negative fill, basically a black flag. So here I have a piece of black card which I've just clamped to a piece of wood so it can stand up on its own. I'm just going to place these at the back just to create a bit of a shadow. There we are. So initially we'll just place them there and we'll see what that looks like. Yes, that's starting to work. I think I can probably just move this flag in a little, but you can see the difference that it's actually made to the beans. If I go to the previous picture, we had this, and now we've got this. So you've got a lot more contrast in here. 
OK, so I'll just try moving that a little closer and see what happens. There we are. So very small changes can make quite a large difference to the finished picture. OK, so this is now starting to go very dark. Uh, so this is what we had before, and this is what we've got now. But it's the quality in here that I'm actually looking at. Uh, I think overall, again, with the exposure has gone down ever so slightly, but we'll come back to that in a moment. Right, so the next thing that I want to address uh, is the shadow which is underneath this plate here. And also, I want to give a little bit of highlight to the top surface of the beams there. And to do that, I'm going to use a mirror. Now, what I'm going to do is try and recycle some of this light back into the subject again. Uh, but once again, in order to be able to see what I'm doing, I'm going to need to turn the modelling light on. So I'll just turn that on, and we'll turn out the house lights. OK. So with that done, what I can do now is just place the mirror in here, and you should be able to see the difference that is making to the image. So it's easy to see when it's in more or less the right place, which I think is about there. So we'll grab an image. There we are, that sort of works. I'll do another one just to make sure. OK, so this is starting to work quite well, I think. Uh, you can see in these images uh, just how much life we brought into the, uh, into the beans there. So I think that's worked quite well. OK, so just finally what I want to do is just liven up the beans a little. So I'll just add some more on top of that pile. Just to give them a bit of shape, like so. There we are. So before they spread out too far, what I can do is put the mirror in position and grab an image. There we go. There we go, so uh, that has worked uh, quite well, I think. Uh, so we've got a nice uh, highlight in these beans, uh, and we've also got nice control of the shadow under the plate, uh, and we have a nice highlight running around the edge just to give it some shape. OK, so with that now captured, it just remains to go into Photoshop and do the bare minimum of post-production. OK, so here we are in Photoshop. Uh, now, the first thing I want to do is just make a copy of the file. This is the uh, image that I've imported into Photoshop. This is the camera original. Uh, so the way that I would do that is just to go onto the layer here, uh, right-click the mouse, ask for a duplicate layer, but ask for a new document. And we'll just call that Beans, and just click on OK. Right. So now Photoshop has made me this new file, so I can dispense with the camera original, which gives me some redundancy. All right, so the first thing I want to do is going to adjust the levels within the image a bit. So if I just go to an adjustment, go on to the levels here, uh, and what I'll do is just bring this in ever so slightly, just to bring that up, and maybe take the contrast down a little, like so. There we are. Yes, I think that's looking better. And really, I don't think there's very much else that I need to do to this. So I'll just have a little look at a crop. 
Uh, now I'm going to be using this for uh, video, so I'm just going to use 16 by 9 as a ratio. Uh, but obviously this would uh, normally depend on your subject. Uh, but in my case, I think that's looking pretty good as it is. So I might just leave that like that. Just bring that in ever so slightly. There we are. Excellent. OK, so I will just click on the commit. There we are. And there we have it. So this image is an exercise, really, in controlling shadows and controlling highlights. Now, the highlight on the plate has been made quite diffuse by the use of the diffusion material. And that has also altered the way the shadow that the plate is casting on the base there. And then, just to add that little bit of sparkle, I used a mirror just to recycle some of the light into the beams themselves. And I think overall that has worked very well. OK, well I hope you liked watching how I made that image. And if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear. And don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and click the like button. Thank you very much for watching.